Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you all how to become rocket scientists. Have you ever wondered what the fins on rockets are for? In general, we know that most rockets look like this. So why the cylinder to begin with? Well, notice if you look straight on at it, it looks like a circle. And a circle has the largest area versus perimeter of any shape. So that means if it's coming straight at you, this is going to have the least air resistance. But a more important thing is cylinders are really easy to make in large sizes. And also this is the shape that can withstand maximum internal pressures. And as you know, you need really high internal pressures to make rockets. So we know that rockets need to be a cylinder shape, but why do they have fins? Well, first let's just take this classic cylinder shape and try to send it through the air and see what happens to it. Instead of throwing this through the air, what I'll do is I'll have this be in place and then have the air pass by it. And we'll see what happens to the cylinder as the air passes by it. So I'll turn on my fan here. Now let's say this is our rocket shooting up into the atmosphere. If it were just a cylinder, let's see what happens to it. You'll notice that it turns sideways. It's supposed to be going this way. Even if I straighten it back out, it wants to stay sideways. All right, well maybe it's because of this blunt tip here. We know that rockets usually have nose cones like this. So let's put a nose cone on it and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Let's start it off straight. And it still turns sideways. Straight again. And it wants to be sideways. So that's not very good. Our rocket's supposed to be flying this way, but it ends up flying sideways. Well, now let's just add our final piece to it. Let's add some fins. What I've done now is just attach three styrofoam fins to this. Now let's turn on our fan and see what it looks like. Now it flies right into the wind. Now we've made a stable rocket and it seems like this should work just fine in any scenario. But I'm going to put a little bit more weight in the back here. So now I've got some heavier weights in the back here. Now let's see how it flies. Turn on our fan. Start it off right. What? So now once again we're flying sideways. Even if I try to straighten it out, it wants to fly sideways again. So you can see for some reason when we added weight in the back, it made it unstable so that it flew sideways and wasn't going in the right direction anymore. So how are all these pieces relating together to get the rocket to fly straight? Before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. If you're like most people in the world, you probably felt depressed, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed. In order to relieve some stress, you can do things like regularly exercise or meditate, but one of the best ways that you can overcome these feelings is by speaking with a real licensed professional. With BetterHelp, you can talk to a therapist in a private online environment at your convenience, which is great because that means no more waiting lists where you have to wait months to see a specialist. Also, BetterHelp has a broad range of expertise with a network of over 20,000 therapists that give you access to help that may not be available in your area. To get started, all you have to do is just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule a secure video or phone session, plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. And no need to worry if you don't like your therapist. For any reason, you can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. So join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab. And thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Well, there's actually two balancing points at play here. One of them is called the center of gravity and the other one is called the center of pressure. The center of gravity of an object just means the point at which it would balance. So you can see I can try to find it for this rocket here, about right here. So this point is about the center of gravity. That's why if I put my elastic band right here, it's going to balance really well. 
But there's another point on here called the center of pressure. The center of pressure means if we're holding it sideways with the wind coming at it like this, at what point do we need to hold it on here so that it's going to be equally balanced with the wind blowing on this side versus this side? In order to test for the center of pressure, we don't want to see where it balances with gravity, but we want to see where it balances with the wind blowing on it. So we don't want to hang it by a string, but I'm going to constrain it in one of the dimensions so it doesn't tilt this way or this way. I'm just going to have it in here like this. So depending on how the wind blows, if it's blowing stronger on this side, it's going to pivot it like that. If it's blowing stronger on this side, it's going to turn it like that. So we can find out where the center of pressure is like this. So this is not balanced. So about right here is our center of pressure. So the red dot is our center of gravity. That's where it balances naturally. And the blue spot is our center of pressure. That's where it balances naturally when it's going into the wind like this. In order for a rocket to be stable, the center of pressure has to be lower than the center of gravity. And we know it was stable because when I suspended it in the wind, it was able to fly straight with little wobbling. But when I added some weight to the back, let's see what that does to the center of gravity. Let's put my weight on the back here. Now let's see where our center of gravity is. So it's definitely no longer here, but it's somewhere about here. So you can see that by adding that weight, we got below the center of pressure. With the weight in the back, our center of gravity moved down to this point. So that meant that our rocket was no longer stable, so it flew sideways in the air instead of flying straight into the wind. So you can see how these two points balance together, get your rocket to fly straight in space. Now if you don't do that, when it actually shoots up in the air, it's going to always want to turn sideways. So that means it's always going to want to be turning and it's going to shoot off one direction or the other. So now you can see why model rockets like this one have the shape that they do. The cylinders to keep in the pressure, the nose cones to reduce drag going forward, and the fins are to stop it from shooting off sideways going into the air like that. But you may have noticed something if you've seen SpaceX rockets. So SpaceX rockets and many other ones don't even have fins. So how are they not flying sideways and how do they stay stable in the air without any fins on them? Well, our main goal is to keep the rocket flying into the wind. So the only reason we have the fins there is to keep them flying into the wind easily. But another way we can do that is just to change the angle of thrust. Instead of just keeping the angle of thrust fixed, we can actually have the rocket on a gimbal. So we could actually have our rocket engine, instead of being fixed like this, it can actually pivot and turn. Now that turns out to be pretty useful because fins like this are only useful in the atmosphere. Because once you no longer have any wind, there's no longer a center of pressure to affect it at all. And another thing that modern rockets have is they also have different rocket boosters on the side where they can shoot it out the side as well. So they can change the direction of the rocket like that. So for many years, model rocket enthusiasts have been figuring out where their center of gravity is and making sure their center of pressure is below it. But it's kind of hard to have this whole setup with a fan and have something that you can only pivot it in two dimensions. So there's actually an easy way to figure out where your center of pressure is. You can actually just do the shadow method. So basically, it's what the shadow of the rocket would make on a flat paper below it. So you just trace it like this. So when we cut it out, it looks like this. Now you can just see where the balancing point of this is. So now if I balance this, we try to find out where the balancing point is. About right here. So this is gonna be about where our center of pressure is. Basically, when we use this method, we're just using gravity itself as if it were the force of the wind pushing on it and seeing where the balancing point is. Let's see how close we were in this method. You can see using this area method, we're a little bit above where the actual center of pressure is, but it's a pretty good estimate. We could at least see that it was behind the center of gravity. So usually this method is a little bit conservative, meaning that it's going to put your center of pressure a little bit higher than it should be. But it's a good estimate to start with, and this is the way people have been doing it for many years. Now if your center of pressure is ever higher than you want it, you can always move it so that your center of gravity is higher by putting weight in your nose cone. You're now all officially rocket scientists. 
Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And also, you can check out theactionlab.com where I sell some Action Lab gear and also experiment boxes. And we sell a cool painting there that has Musso Black in it. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.